I'm Mark Davis. Uh, I'm the MBA Careers Manager for UCD Smith at Business School in Dublin, and I help our MBA students find their first job after the MBA. You might know that um, Ireland is a big tech hub in Europe, uh, so that would be a big source of opportunities for our students. Normally about a third of them go into the tech sector each year. I guess when we're, when we're talking tech, I mean, we're talking, yes, we have uh, European headquarters of, of big tech. So Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, uh, those kind of companies. Uh, but obviously you can kind of break that down. There's quite a lot of uh, SaaS and cloud uh, organizations here. So perhaps the, the more established names like Oracle and IBM, uh, but you've also got uh, growing companies like Workday, Salesforce really big here. Um, you have fintech as an emerging um, concern here. So again, you have maybe more established names like PayPal, but also growth firms like Stripe and like Square. Uh, I guess beyond tech, there's quite a lot as well. So uh, maybe less well known for it, but a lot of opportunities in consulting. Uh, so all of the big four hire a lot from our school. Uh, we would normally have about 30% of the class going into consulting as well. Uh, and then Ireland in general is also quite strong in uh, pharmaceuticals uh, and also in increasingly in financial services as well. Well, I guess when I talk to prospective students, um, often they they tell me that it's the, the strength and reputation of the education system in Ireland. So Ireland has a very strong reputation for, for education right through from primary to secondary and also into higher education and universities. Uh, and that is one reason that a lot of the firms were, were attracted to, to locate themselves in Ireland in the first place. Um, but also it's English speaking. so. I think uh, particularly with Brexit, um, some students are attracted by the fact that they can still study in Europe, but uh, do so in an English speaking country. Um, and Dublin is, I mean, it has a lot of the benefits of the city, but it's its not a big city, so it's quite easy to settle in. It's very safe. Um, and uh, I mean, there would be many other reasons I think students would, would look to study here as well, but those are just some of them. I think um, obviously one of the main reasons people pick UCD Smurfit is because we're very established within Ireland. So it makes sense for people who are looking to work here after their career. Um, so we would have obviously some Irish students. They wouldn't all have lived and worked in Ireland prior to the MBA necessarily. Some of them will be using us as a step back into the market. So maybe they've worked abroad um, for the last five or six years and now they're coming back into Ireland for various reasons and, and studying here and looking to get back into their local market. Uh, and then we attract obviously international students who are perhaps looking at Ireland as a good place to start their post-MBA career, maybe looking at some of those companies that we've talked about. Um, and so for that reason, you know, the vast majority of them are looking for jobs here. So we tend to see it's a very high proportion who stay here. So I think in the three years that I've been at UCD Smurfit, it's been no lower than 70%. Uh, and, and last year was, I think, around 90 90% um, of the students stay here. So very high. I think on the visa side, there's sort of maybe quite well known that Ireland does have a two-year post-study work visa but but to be honest with you I'm not sure whether that's necessarily the main reason I think it's it's more the fact that a you know that this is a, a growing there's growing job opportunities here so firms kind of need to look beyond the domestic pool of talent um, that will be one big reason um, and, and secondly, like, like we talked about, the fact it's English speaking, you know, yeah, there's great opportunities if you have a second language, particularly a second European language, but it's perfectly possible to get a job here if you don't as well. So that would be, would be another reason. Um, so I, I think those two, uh, the fact it's just generally a good job market, 
um, and also an English speaking job market, I think is, is the reason a lot of our students stay here. And the fact that UCD Smurfit has a very strong domestic reputation, I, again, I think like it makes sense for people to study their MBA here, really, if they're, if they're quite focused on working in Ireland. Obviously, we work with, like any business school and business school career service, we work with corporate recruiters. That kind of goes without saying. And I think um, often that's sort of what students expect. Um, but, but to be honest with you, I, I think at the, you know, at the MBA level, and particularly in a country like Ireland, where connections really matter culturally, I mean, it's a, it's a relatively small country still, and people know each other, and they, they're used to you know, feeling comfortable about knowing someone before they're, they're hired. Um, it's really important to, to network with alumni. Um, so a lot of our career services are really structured around access to alumni, perhaps even more so than, than access to recruiters, because to be honest with you, that they're often the most useful source of information, useful source of guidance and um, can often refer our students into their organisations as well. I guess I'm going to firstly say here, I'll talk maybe more about the full-time MBA because that's where the careers, there's a careers programme that's quite structured. Uh, we do also have um, very successful executive MBA programmes um, and we would work with them slightly differently. And I'm happy to talk about that later. But with regards to the full-time MBA, um, I guess everyone comes in and they don't have a job because they've given it up. So we will put them through quite a structured program of um, deciding what they want to do uh, and then getting them kind of able to communicate their value, identify opportunities, you know, work on their CV, interview skills, all that kind of thing that really, I mean, I guess most career services do. So we do all of the basics. Um, in terms of maybe what's a little bit different, uh, firstly would be because we have quite a small class. Um, so normally between about 30 to 40 students on the full-time MBA each year. Um, now, I think the, 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 the kind of difficulty of that is it makes it harder to do kind of big group activities. Um, but the advantage that we find is that we can then work much more individually and person in a personalised way with students. Um, so we would do a lot of one to one work uh, with them, to be honest with you. Um, and that extends to kind of individual introductions to alumni. Um, one of the things that I think we do that certainly not everyone else does. And again, it's 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 linked into that um, use of the alumni network would be uh, the alumni mentoring program that we have in the, the second half of the MBA year. So uh, what we do there is every full-time MBA is matched with a senior mentor from our alumni community. And they're all people who've passed through the MBA. So they kind of, they know the experience, um, they know how to pitch the MBA to employers. And also importantly, they have that sector expertise or that role expertise um, in an area that the student is maybe looking to get into and they can kind of coach and mentor the student um, as they get more into applications and deep into their networking and sometimes even open their contact book to them as well. And I found that, it, it, you know, that's something that's quite resource intensive for us to do, but it's great because it's, it, it's incredibly tailored um, and a lot of the students say it's one of the most valuable parts of their entire MBA experience. So we're very proud of that. I think it's very difficult to generalize about MBA students um, and particularly ours because we do have a small class. So there can be quite big changes from one year to the next. Um, I, I guess it comes back to what we were talking about at the start in terms of where the, jo the job opportunities, like a big proportion of the job opportunities are in terms of the sectors. So a lot of the roles would be linked to 
the sorts of opportunities that exist within technology firms in general. So there you might look at kind of customer success or product marketing, product management, um, strategy roles. Um, it could be finance. I mean, it really, I think with an MBA, you know, depending on your background and your interests, it's, it's it, there's a lot of potential opportunities out there for you. Um, and, and like I said, consulting is, is, is also another big area of opportunity for the students. And they would typically be joining at say senior consultant or manager level, depending on their level of experience. Um, but we have, you know, we have MBA students. Some of them have three years of work experience. Some of them have 20. So, you know, there has been the odd CEO and, and, and much more senior person because, you know, they've come in with that deep experience and expertise prior to the MBA. So, yeah, it's very difficult to generalise. Um, and of course, there are always outliers. There's always someone who gets into a job that maybe you didn't even know existed. So. Um, and particularly with the tech sector, you know, that, that is, it's, it's changing very, very quickly. So the sources of opportunities change from year to year uh, as well. So I don't think that's one of the exciting things about working and studying in Dublin. Just look at last year, I think the average um, post MBA salary for the full time MBA was around 70,000 euros. Um, but my caveat with that is it masks a very wide range of salaries so like I said if you've come in with three years of work experience particularly if that work experience maybe is from a different country or from an industry that that you know isn't so represented in Ireland then maybe your salary is going to go be on the lower end of the scale however if you're coming in and you have European market experience and you have many years and it's within an industry that is big and growing in Ireland, then clearly your your salary is going to be much higher than that average, let's be honest. So, yeah, look, I hope that's given an idea, but um, it, it certainly shouldn't be an expectation either. You know, to, to half of the people listening, probably that's going to seem low and to the other half, it might seem high. <laughs> The one thing that I would say is obviously UCD has built a very strong reputation over the years and UCD Smurfit has built a reputation as the best business school in Ireland and that is, you know, we have, we've had a long history of running an MBA programme here. So there are alumni who graduated many years ago that are still out there in the market and act to some of those mentors I was talking about. I guess it's just been, it's not one thing, but it certainly has been a focus on quality over the years that we haven't compromised on, you know, and that is one of the reasons that the class is not huge because we we stick to um, our principles when we're we're assessing prospective students and we would keep our standards as high as anyone else. You know, so uh, and, and that's that's to maintain the value of that MBA, both to people that at the study maybe next year, but also to our alumni that studied many years ago, that they can be confident that the people that are coming through the programme have an inherent quality already. And then we build on that and we give them more. I mean, there's there's two things There's kind of that there's hiring um, and then there's there's what happens then when you're in the job. Um, so in terms of kind of how we've seen recruiting and career services change over the last year, I think it, it, there hasn't been really too much of an effect on the recruitment process. Obviously, interviews have moved online. <laughs> as you would imagine, and therefore some of our interview prep is more geared towards that. So, for example, we every year, each of the full-time MBA students has at least one mock interview, so a practice interview with a recruiter or an alumnus from one of our employer partners. And that gives them a, it gives them a chance to dry run um, some of their answers before they're interviewing for real. And we've done that on online, of course, this year, rather than in person, 
partly because we've had to, but also partly because that's mirroring um, the recruitment processes. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's, that's one example. Um, I, I think in terms of access to opportunities and alumni, there's been a lot of positives. So, for example, we've actually managed to engage with some new companies this year because they're not physically close to us, but actually because now they're, they're not doing kind of physical campus um, visits, they're doing things online, you know, our students have been able to access that. Um, and we have a presentation coming up in a couple of weeks for a company based in Berlin, for example, you know, and that wouldn't have happened in the past. So I, I think it's opened up opportunities. Um, and I don't think that will change. I think campus attraction and recruitment will still stay partly online in the future, which is good for schools like us, I think. A big positive has been that engagement with alumni who are not based locally as well. Like I said, I mean, a lot of our career services structure around access to and networking with alumni. So we've had kind of career panels where we've invited alumni from particular industries to talk to our students this year and in the past. Um, it might have been difficult to get someone to say come from North Dublin to South Dublin, let alone from the other side of Ireland or from the UK or the US, you know, but that's what we've seen this year. And, I, I, you know, that's been a real benefit. I think that we will, so we will retain, I think, some of our activities online in the future so that students can hear from someone who's working on the West Coast of the US or working in London or somewhere else in Europe. And I think that really adds to the experience. Just from an Irish perspective, um, I can't see any evidence for con concern, let me put it that way. So the, the, the job market here has stayed pretty resilient. Um, you know, in fact, our MBA students from last year there was a little bit of a delay in them getting jobs, but actually, ultimately, our statistics are higher than they've been for the last six years. So um, we actually saw an upturn in uh, job offers accepted. So, you know, that's partly because a lot of the firms that are based here have either not been affected by COVID or have actually profited from it. So if you take some of those tech firms, some of those fintech payment firms, for example, you know, they're, they're growing because of COVID. So I, I, I think depending on what you want to do, um, there's reason for optimism, not pessimism. Um, and there was a bit of a in, in consulting, which we would which we'll obviously a lot of our students go into, and we would notice there was a bit of a hiring freeze for a few months last year, but that picked up again. So I personally have no cause for concern. Um, I think in just generally, you know, any MBA, I think you have to really be sure it's the right time for you to do it in your career. And if, if, if you're sure it's the right time for you to do it, I think you're better off doing it now rather than delaying it because it might then become just for other reasons not the right time. Um, so yeah, from, from a kind of job market perspective, I would say I've no cause for concern. <laughs>